everyone, welcome back to the Global Mazda MX-5 Cup in iRacing for a 10 lap dash around Summit Point. We've got 12 cars on the grid and I'm slap bang in the middle of them, starting P6 with a qualifying time of 122.6. Now my lap was 0.8 of a second slower than the pole position man Nico Borna, but this is a rookie series, anything could happen. Let's get on track. Green, green, green. And it's green. We're underway at Summit Point. It always feels like such a sluggish start in these Master MX-5 cars, but we've got away okay. We've got Angle Pasquara to the right of us and Soretto Mendez just behind us. Both of them on the inside line, so we're going to have to stay out wide into T1. It's probably not the worst place to be. It gives us the opportunity to avoid any carnage. And just as I say that, there's contact between Pasquara and Patrick Alders. Both of them managed to shrug it off, although Pasquara is a little bit down on pace. That's going to give us the opportunity to pull alongside, but I'm going to think twice about going into this left-hander too wide. I just back out of that one. It's not the type of corner you want to be going in side by side, particularly on lap one with these cold tyres. So I'm just going to tuck back in behind Pasquara here. We're still in sixth place. We've maintained our starting position, so that's the most important thing. Meanwhile, behind Santiago Romero has tucked it up the inside of Soretto Mendez into the carousel. Romero could be a wild card here, starting from 11th on the grid, but he's already up to 7th, so he's clearly got some early pace here. And worryingly, there's a little bit of daylight starting to open up between me and the pack of five in front, although Pasquara is out onto the grass. That's surely going to give us an opportunity to pull alongside. We've got the inside line for the final turn. We don't even need it. We've got the job done already. So that's us up into fifth. So as we end lap one, it's the pole position man, Nico Borner, leading the way from Jonathan Maines in second, Patrick Alders in third, and Herb St. Laurent's in fourth. We're in fifth with Angle Pasquara close behind in sixth. In fact, Pasquara may even have a look up the inside into T1. He's got a little bit of extra pace, but he's just not quite close enough to get the pass done. He may have another opportunity on exit, though, because the cold tyres caught me out there. I didn't have the grip I was expecting to have, and that has let Pasquara through on the inside. Meanwhile, we've lost one of the front runners. Patrick Alders has slid into the bushes, so we're still in fifth. Right, let's check out the replay. This is the mistake Pasquara made that cost him fifth position. Two tyres out onto the grass and he actually did really well to save that. These cars notoriously difficult to control when you get out on that green stuff. Then at the end of the start finish straight, I just run it in a little bit too hot into T1. That allowed Pasquara to take that fifth position back, but then exit in the corner. We saw big coming together between Jonathan Maines and Patrick Alders. It was Alders that got sent out into the shrubbery there, but it looked like a case of neither driver wanting to give an inch. Maines on the left moving over to the right, Alders on the right moving over to the left, but it was Alders who came off the worst there. Start of lap three, we're still in fifth position, 0.5 of a second behind Angle Pasquera in fourth, but I'm just going to get a bit unsettled by this curb on the inside, but not as unsettled as Jonathan Maines, who's out onto the grass, that puts us up to fourth. Yeah, watch Maines in second position, he's defending against Irv St. Laurent into T1, but he's just going to lose the rear mid-corner, he does try to save it, but it's no use, he's out onto the grass, and then he's coming back on track, thankfully we all managed to get around him. Start of lap four and the two drivers in front, St. Laurent and Pasquera, have just managed to open up a one second advantage now. I'm in danger of losing touch with this podium battle. However, uh, Pasquera is all over St. Laurent into turn one and I think the pressure is getting to the second place man. He was really loose on exit there. That has invited Pasquera to make a move up the inside. Oh, they're getting really close. They've got too close. There's contact. And Pasquera has exited stage left. That was a carbon copy replica of the incident we saw at the start of lap two. This time, it's Pasquera who takes a trip to the woods. And that has promoted us up into third position, but it could yet get better because we are all over St. Laurent's now. We could challenge for second position here. We saw earlier in the lap that St. Laurent's is prone to a mistake under pressure. But yeah, this incident was identical to the one we saw a couple of laps earlier. Once again, we've got two drivers just not giving each other enough space here. On board with St. Laurent. We'll see Pasquera open up half a car length's advantage, but then they come together in the centre of the track. Well, we're just starting lap five. Nico Borner is the runaway leader. Irv St. Laurent's in second, and we're up to third. There's the confirmation from crew chief. 
But with just 0.6 of a second of second place now, there's a warning of an instant ahead, surely that's not the race leader, it is! Nico Borna has come a cropper in T1 and that is going to give Irv St. Marans the chance to lead this race, he's going to make a move up the inside, can he get it done before the left-hander? Yes he can, Borna's going to have a look back up the inside, he thinks better of it! And all of a sudden we've also got Soretto Mendes for company too! Well, look at the advantage that Nico Borner had built up. He's five seconds clear at this point and cruising towards a race victory until he makes this mistake, losing the rear in T1. He keeps it off the grass, but that is a costly error as the rest of the pack pounce. Well, I'll tell you what, I thought I was in contention for a second place finish, but all of a sudden this race has been blown wide open by Borna's mistake. We've got a new leader in Irv St. Arams, Nico Borna in second, I'm in third, and we're halfway through now, we've still got five laps to go. Meanwhile, behind it, looks like Mendes hasn't quite got the pace to stick with us. There's a little bit of breathing room on, but Nico Borna's got turn one room again. Borna has crashed out of second position. Well, what an enthralling race this is. Look how close it is. That is first to seventh, separated by less than two seconds. However, we're watching the driver in second, Nico Borna, get it all wrong in T1 for the second time in successive laps. And that puts us up to second. Okay, you're in second. Well, there's the confirmation from Crew Chief. We're up to second, and we're just one second off the, the race leader, leader. of St. Arans. Now, we've still got four laps to go, and we know we're a little bit quicker than St. Arans. We could be in contention for a race victory here. Can we close the gap on the race leader? Well, yes, we can. Over the next couple of laps, I clawed away at that one second advantage and got myself right onto the tail of Irv St. Arans. Two laps to go. Oh no, don't start getting ping issues now. This will be a nightmare if we've got to try and pass him for the race win and he's blinking everywhere. But we're as close as we've ever been now and he does look shaky through T1. Once again, he's not very smooth through there. We're going to get a better run out of the corner. This could be an opportunity. I said earlier in the race that I didn't want to go through this left-hander too wide, but I might not have a choice if I want to win this race. I'm just not quite close enough. I backed out at the last moment there. And that might cost me a tenth or two. Irv St. Arantz is going to open up a little bit of an advantage as we approach the carousel for the penultimate time. What can we do here? We're hard on the brakes trying to close that gap back in. St. Arantz is a little bit loose on exit. We're reeling him in again here. Unless he makes a mistake, there's probably not going to be an opportunity to pass. So all I can do is try and stay as close as possible and pick up some draft down the start finish straight. I think our best opportunity to win this race will be by tucking it up the inside into T1. We're not quite close enough at the moment. We need to do better. We need to be within 0.2, 0.3 of a second of it to stand the chance of making a move up the inside into T1. Currently, it's 0.8 of a second, but he's out onto the gravel. St. Arantz is feeling the pressure here. This will give us a chance to reel the gap in, but I don't think we're going to be close enough to pounce into T1. Well, this is it. One lap to go at Summit Point. It is now or never. We've got to hope that St. Arantz is a little bit shaky through T1 again, and he is. We're all over him now. We've got a much better exit. When we tried a dress rehearsal for this move a lap ago, this time we are going to have to make it count. We're alongside. There's no backing out this time. This is our opportunity to win this race and we hold on to it. Well, I've got to admit I wasn't 100% confident that I could make that one stick, but I knew it might be my last chance to get past St. Arantz and we have managed it. We're 0.5 of a second clear into the carousel for the last time. St. Arantz has a look up the inside. We close the door and now St. Arantz is under pressure from Jonathan Felipe in third and he's gone. St. Arantz has slid into the barrier. Well, what a dramatic last lap. This is the overtake that gave me the lead of the race. Now, I tried this move a lap earlier, but I didn't have the bottle to see it through. But I had no choice this time. This was my last opportunity to get past St. Aran. However, he's going to fight right back into the carousel. Watch him make a move up the inside, trying to get the lead back. He's not quite close enough. It forces him to run wide on X. He just clips the grass. Oh, and he comes within inches of taking out Jonathan Felipe there. 
Well, race wins in iRacing do not come along very often, so I am going to enjoy this one. We are going to cross the line at Summit Point, taking the checkered flag by just 0.5 of a second from Jonathan Felipe in second. Irv St. Aran's recovered to take fourth place. Pavel Madovi ended up getting the final podium spot. Here are the classified results then. And boy, did I up my game in this race. My qualifying time was a 122.6, but look at my fastest lap in the race. A 121.8. And we beat some pretty high I ratings as well. As a result, we've got plus 91 on our own rating. That is one of the biggest increases I've had in a long, long time. So a victorious end to my week of racing. If you've enjoyed watching, please do leave a like and let me know what you thought of the video in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you on the grid for the next one. Thanks ever so much for watching.